This chapter is Respiratory Distress and Failure in Infants and Children. First, let's discuss how to recognize respiratory distress and failure. Is it ventilation or oxygenation? In ventilation, the airway is clear. The muscles of the chest are functioning, and the rate of breathing is sufficient. In oxygenation, oxygen is available. The lungs have blood flow, and gases can cross the pulmonary vasculature. Is it respiratory distress or respiratory failure? If it is respiratory distress, the airway is open without support, tachypnea, and increased effort, clear sounds, tachycardia, agitation, and pale variable. If it is respiratory failure, the airway is possibly obstructed. There may be slow breathing or no effort, abnormal sounds, bradycardia, no response, or the victim could be cyanotic and variable. Abnormal breathing sounds include strider, grunting, wheezing, crackles, and absent or decreased breathing noises. Here are causes of respiratory distress. In the upper airway, distress can be caused by croup, a foreign body, retropharyngeal abscess, or anaphylaxis. In the lower airway, it is caused by bronchiolitis or asthma. Lung tissue disease is caused by pneumonia, pneumonitis, or pulmonary edema. A CNS issue is due to overdose or head trauma. Next, let's talk about how to respond to respiratory distress or failure. Initial management of respiratory distress or failure includes opening the airway, suctioning, and considering an advanced airway. Management of breathing includes monitoring oxygen stats, giving supplemental oxygen and nebulizers. Management of circulation involves monitoring vital signs and establishing vascular access. Here is a chart describing the treatments for upper airway, lower airway, lung tissue disease, and CNS issues for respiratory distress or failure in children and infants. That's all for respiratory distress and failure. The next lesson will be bradycardial. Thank you.